Okay, so I'm now going to introduce workflows or another terminology for, for the same thing is pipelines and I notice Mark used something called pipelines, right? So workflows, <coughs> pipelines, they're interchangeable concepts. And the reason is that there's not one step to an analysis. So what we've talked about, there's a quality control and you might have to do something about the quality, some sort of a cleanup, then we've got a mapping, and then we've got application steps. So, so at the moment what happens is one program does that and then passes it on to the next program, passes it on to the next program. And for a software uh, product like Genomatics, which you use this afternoon, the same applies, that it'll be modular, but it's, you're working within the same software but still you've got modules where you've got a choice you know I could do it this way or I could do it that way and you just sort of slot them in so you've got different options so that so setting up a series of analysis steps like that a pipeline or a workflow those are the terms so as I said you know typically it would be much more complicated than that and as Mark pointed out and which I would fully support this really is you know, in lots of ways, sequencing is still in, in the cutting edge, you could say bleeding edge kind of state of affairs, right? So nothing has settled down to, oh, this is the way we do it, right? It's always up for, for um, discussion, really, what is the best approach? So just get used to that. That's part of this field. And I think, you know, as the years go by, things will gravitate towards particular ways of doing it but we're not there at the moment. So, so that's why workflows are important because you could say, well, I've analyzed the data with this workflow and you might want to rerun it with a different workflow. But um, I think, you know, because things are so wide open in terms of how to do it, it is important to define and describe your workflow. Um, yeah, then the other thing that's useful about a workflow, and, and we'll, we'll do that today, is that you set up a workflow with one sample, but maybe you've got 100 patients that you want to analyze in the same way. So the, the big work from a human perspective is, is setting up your workflow so you're confident by the end that you've got the right answer. Then you just get the computers to run the other 99 and just use the same workflow. Okay, so it's, it's very important for, for automation and, and also sharing your, um, and as a point I make later on, maybe even in publishing, uh, we should be considering publishing our workflows. Uh, I think, right, so that was that. Any questions about workflows? It is quite important. I know a few people were interested in that. What I describe is it straightforward? Good. Okay, Galaxy. So <coughs> they they label themselves as workflows for genomics. They, in fact, the the whole platform was was created kind of almost before next gen sequencing really took off. And so, web based platform for data intensive biomedical research. This is essentially what what it looks like. It's something that you do in the browser, so it's you know you don't need um, to be uh, a computer hacker who who does everything on black screens and whatever. You can actually just do it with point and click. So there is a public instance of Galaxy, and if you've got a small project at the moment or expecting one then you could consider doing this, or rather using the site, okay? Now, the performance of it is, is, is quite unpredictable, okay? So if, if it's been used very intensively, you'll submit a job and you can wait a day before the, the job actually goes in and gets processed, yeah? So it's not really convenient to use for a, in a training setting like this. So we've built a small instance of it, and um, we'll be using that today. Okay, so at least we've got more control about who's using it and etc. So, um, so we've made some accounts for you, 
and we'll leave those accounts open for two weeks. The idea is not that you can then hammer it with your own data, it's more like just that you can go back and refer to this tutorial and um, if you want to export anything. But it's, it's kind of like, I, I see it as a staging that if you want to do this kind of an anger, you know, register with the, pub, with the public one and uh, you can do your analysis on that. Like I said, you, there's, there's waiting time, but it's not your waiting time. You can actually, with Galaxy, we'll see that. You can actually just submit the job and then you can just go away. You can switch your computer off and it just does it when it does it. So, you know, you can get on and do other things. So it's not that much of a problem, I think, but it is a problem in a training session, you know, when, if it's going to take 24 hours before the job gets run. So. Okay, so let's go a little bit more into depth about what Galaxy is. So I've mentioned these before. So it integrates many tools within one interface. So, initially when it was built, they spent a lot of time doing this, into easy retrieval of data from different sources where there's public data available. So UCSC, Biomart, and other databases. Okay, so that's really important for this um, platform and why it's become so popular, that they've integrated that. You can just download genomes, um, annotations, gene models. It's all quite kind of nicely... Um, integrated. There's some text manipulation tools. I find them pretty clunky to be honest. I tend to, I have to just sort of confess, if I've got a spreadsheet I tend to download it, open it up into Excel or something and move columns around and then stick it back in. But you can do that in Galaxy but I, like I said I find it a bit clunky. Of course it's good if you have to do a hundred samples then it's worth doing it in Galaxy because you know, there's this automation that you're winning, but once you've actually set the whole thing up. And you can do different filters, joins, etc. Now that's quite important if, say you want to identify some SNP. So you've, you've run your analysis and you've got a list of maybe 500 potential SNPs in your sample, then you want to compare it to all the SNPs in a known day in, in SNPDB, for example. So you download that list, so then you want to be joining them, finding overlaps. Yeah? So all of that's quite, um, all quite useful to be doing in there. Like I said, it's not that easy to run, that part of it, and we won't be looking at that today, but there are lots of tutorials online if you know, those are particular things you need to be doing. Okay, it integrates tools from, from different sources and if you have a local instance like we do and if you've got something, someone skilled like we have at the back there, Pete, um, can actually build tools. So you can actually, it, it's not just a static um, interface where, you know, you can use what's there and if it's not there, well, you, you know, you're at a loss. You can actually build your own tool. So, there might be someone at your institute who's got a galaxy and then you you end up finding yourself gravitating on a particular tool that's really useful but it's not in galaxy you might be able to talk to them and get it to be installed okay so that's how we tend to work now we we try to build our own tools if if it's really useful and the public site is quite nicely integrated with the, the browser so you can generate um, a, a file and then it's just sort of a click to open up, it up, open it up in the browser as well. So nicely integrated there. Okay, so I just thought I'd, be, I'd better put this warning in there because if you've got data that um, needs to be kept confidential, that the settings for Galaxy are by default very public. You can actually go and, and make them a bit more stringent. So have a you know, if this is something that's important to you, you need to research that a bit. Don't just go in there like, oh, it's all fine. Um, if you're using the public site, it is very public. N not, you know, there's, there's just so many of the data sets in there, I can't see anyone really coming after it, but, you know, uh, you, you work under certain rules, don't you, if you're working with, uh, with public data. <coughs> I mean, with, with private data, yeah. 
Okay, so let's look at the Galaxy interface and then we'll start clicking on your own screen a bit. So the interface is these kind of three main blocks. Right, so we've got our tools here and there's a little search. Why don't you actually log in now and get going? Yeah, so on the left we've got the tools available and there's a lot in there and they're, they're broken down to different sections. So if you just have a bit of a click around, there's also a search. So just remember that. Right at the top there's a search. So if, you, if someone gives you the name of the tool, you can just type that in because it's all subcategorized and it's not always obvious where they've stuck the thing. So, um, but, so, those, so those are the tools, those are the things you're going to run on your data. Okay, that's on the left. In the middle, we've got an area for looking at your data, if it's possible. If it's some kind of binary form, you're not going to be able to see it. But if it's human readable in some way, that'll be in the middle when we've got around to doing that. And then on the right, this is their jargon for it, they call that the history. But essentially, when you load up a data, it appears there. When you start running a job, it, it generates a new file and that file will change color as it's proceeding. So it starts in gray when nothing's happened, then it turns to yellow as something starts to happen, and then it turns to green when the job's done. And so it all just sort of accumulates and stacks up, so it's a way of going back and seeing what you did. It's all, so that's all there. So in a way, it's, it's, it's kind of analogous to your workflow or your pipeline, but it's not directly the same as you'll see when you, when you work with it. Now don't forget also, at the top of the screen, there's a number of links. So we're going to use some of those links there. So, so you've got this kind of three-fold division, tools, looking at the data, and your history, your current history. And then you've got these tools at the top there as well, so don't forget those. And in there, there's your account. So if you just click on that now, that's quite an important area if you go into the public area, if you want to start changing things about, you know, whether your data is public or not, if you go to the public site. So you are able to change your password there if you want to. You can't change the, the email address, which is the account name. Uh, so, because um, in some ways that would have been easier. We could have just emailed you then directly about your account when we, uh, when we have to do something about it. But um, that's an area to, to sort of... Um, change things to do with your account. Okay, so that's the basic interface.